Wall Street is back to its old shenanigans, or so says marketplace editor and Wall Street guru Dennis Berman about the recent ruling in a Delaware court case between, I'm going to make sure I get this right, El Paso Energy and some shareholders and Kinder Morgan and Morgan Stanley and Goldman Sachs. I advise people, you, you advised me to read this thing, and I did. Let me oh, just you, want, you want to look at read it? This, read you this, read this. It is, it is, that is a textbook case of Wall Street and, I'd say, the management at El Paso and Kinder Morgan right. engaging in what I would call shenanigans, not illegal, but certainly, let's call it of a dubious nature, and, quote, unquote, getting away with it. Leo Strine said, you know what, let the merger go ahead. I'm not going to put it, issue an injunction, but, but I'm going to tell you guys all the things they did wrong here. Yes. And it's a long kind of opinion. And I'm going to use the word taint about how this process came together. Just to refresh everyone very quickly, uh, El Paso, an energy company, sells itself to Kinder Morgan, another energy company. There are two pieces of El Paso, one that is going to stay with Kinder Morgan, the other that is not. It's going to be spun off. Lo and behold, the CEO of El Paso, uh, who is negotiating solely with El Kinder Morgan, uh, eventually it comes up that he perhaps wants to purchase on his own the other part of El Paso that's being that will eventually right. be sold off right. by Kinder Morgan. Right. So there, that is the CEO of El Paso right there. That's Mr. Fauché. Who, who apparently was negotiating the deal kind of freewheeling on his own, yes. even though he also had an interest in buying a part that Kinder Morgan did not want to keep of El Paso, exactly. correct? Right, exactly. exactly. And even though the, the, the board gave a specific price target that, that he was expo supposed to extract from Kinder Morgan, he uh, kept on reducing his price, and the board went went along with it. So, and where does Goldman Sachs fit into this? You well, ask? they were a shareholder in Kinder Morgan. Point yes. one. Yes. They were also the advisor to El Paso. Yes. And the advisor to Kinder Morgan, I believe. Yes. yes. So they were playing multiple roles here, as they say. Right. It was just a, it's just amazing, and in some ways, you can't really explain all this in a little no, bit. No, no. You have to, you have to I mean, read it's this. Kind of an yeah, absurd thing we're going through here. <laughs> but but I think if we can, whoever's watching. Go and read the opinion by Leo Strine and, and, and just take in all the facts and see how the behavior came together. And, and when you do, I think you begin to, as we have unfortunately developed an utterly jaundiced, cynical view yeah. of, of Wall Street and how a large part of business right. gets and done. Right, and the point that the uh, uh, judge brings up is, look, it's not in the economic interest of the El Paso shareholders who, is, who wanted me to issue an injunction to stop the deal from going ahead. But I'm going to now spank everybody involved here to tell you I'm really unhappy called to use the term taint. To use taint? To use the word taint. There's something that taint right here, he says. I and mean, let's that, not I mean, forget that's... about the golden banker who he names in the yeah. complaint, which is kind of rare for a judge, who had an economic interest in the, he was advising the seller and he has an economic interest in the buyer. Right. Although I would say in the scheme of a lot of the stuff that went on, that's almost like, a, I mean, I'm not trying to condone right. it, but it's, it's a kind of a small oh, element. I forgot. Lloyd Blankfein makes an appearance in this opinion. Yes, he does. He makes a uh, very nice call to the CEO well, of I don't El know Paso. if he actually made the call. It was scripted that he would make scripted the call. I don't think it call. says that he made the call. Um, so you've been, you've been a banker. You've been in yeah. business. Yeah. Uh, you this read this is, together, and, and well, how does it make I, you, you know feel? My, you know my view on Wall Street in general, even though I think that, um, it is... Uh, there, there are very few angels on Wall Street, and there's full disclosure that there aren't. This one in particular brings out my motto that you should never be too cynical about Wall Street. Yes. You read this thing and you realize that's probably the right view to take. I mean, this confirms a lot of my view. Uh, I'm not saying it was necessarily a bad outcome for the El Paso shareholders, but how they got there certainly and kind that of... Me, that to me is how all this works, right? It wasn't necessarily a bad outcome but it probably could have been better. And in that gap between not bad and probably better are sums of hundreds of millions, probably potentially billions of dollars that shareholders will never know what the value is and never get to see yeah. them. The Morgan Stanley fairness opinion. Keep your eyes on that one also if you bother to read this because <laughs> that to me was like, was just when you think you can't get any more cynical, then you read that one and you're like, woo, Dennis Berman, thank you very much.